I'm not Jay Ingram. And sadly, I'm not Zaya Tong. She's gorgeous. But this is Daily Planet. Meet the pulverizer. The name says it all. It's a voracious machine with an unending appetite for concrete. The next time you pick up a garlic crusher, think about how it came to be in your hand. It didn't just spring from the air. It was designed by somebody or several people. Most of our tools have changed and evolved over the years. And this is especially true for the big tools used in construction and demolition. What goes into designing a tool to crush concrete, for example? Today, we have an answer. A demolition site is different from a construction site. Instead of building things, if you can't cut it, or crush it, or rip it, you don't belong here. The latest demolition monster tool has appeared. A pulverizer. Well, a pulverizer is an attachment for an excavator that allows the operator to grasp and literally chew blocks of concrete. I'm a little bit concerned about the teeth on a pulverizer because those are a little bit smaller than the teeth that I really wanted to go with. And I'm worried that when you're picking up a big piece of concrete, if you crunch too hard while the piece is in the teeth, that we might break a tooth. Mark Nye invents heavy equipment for the construction industry, and his latest invention is actually a new take on an older concrete eater, something his dad invented 30 years ago. The original concept that you came up with was to take a grapple and put some jaws in the back of it so that the customer would be able to pick up the material from the pile and move it around more easily. Even if we taper that down, like so, mm -hmm. it'd be a bit more easy access when you squeeze it together. That's a conventional pulverizer. Mark and his father's new design takes the old pulverizer, blunt at the front end, and turns it into something with teeth and a hydraulic rod to tip the bucket up so the concrete won't spill out. We talked about could we put a set of jaws in a conventional contractor's grapple. This would allow you to pick up chunks of concrete and be more selective of how you could pick up pieces and then crunch them. But the problem is you can't get the material back into the jaws, back deep in the throat where you have the highest crushing force. To design a better cement crusher, Mark looked here. The power of a dog's jaws. He'd go straight up to dive on it, grab it with his front teeth, pick it up off the ground, and he would probably lift it up and then jerk his mouth back and get it thrown back up into his jaws, where his carnassal teeth are and his molars are, where he had the highest pressure, the highest force available. And then he would crunch it away. All the computer-assisted design in the world won't replace actually making the tool to see if it works. And when you've got a custom shop to play with, it only takes a day to knock the new pulverizer together. That looks good. Yeah, it's okay. Going up. The things that we're running into right now are the, the spacing of the teeth. And look, these teeth are a little bit wider than we originally anticipated on the model. In fact, we model it with a different uh, make of tooth. These are a brand new type of tooth system, and they appear to be a little bit too wide and they're not meshing past one another right now. So we may have to either reposition the teeth on the cutting edges or we might have to go to a different selection of tooth. It's a beast, it looks beautiful, it's a monster. I mean, just look at it. Does that not look like some kind of a monstrous beast ready to just devour anything in its sight? Well, today's a big day where we find out if all this work has been worth it. It's about a month later, and the pulverizer has been welded together, painted, and put on the front of an excavator. The teeth seem to be working fine. It can pick up everything from metal debris to mid-sized pieces of concrete. But the operator seems to be having some difficulty with the idea of tipping the bucket up to let the material fall back into the most effective crushing area. So it's a little bit different from the other pulverizer yeah, yeah. where gravity's working against you. So try to get gravity to work for you and open it wide. This time, it seems to work much better. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. 
But there are still some problems. The concrete chunks are not being crushed in the very spot Mark figured would be the most effective. I think what's happening is the material is getting jammed between the bottoms of the teeth and this, this blocker plate. Yeah, these are the plates right here that are blocking the material from flowing through. And we can cut this plate out or possibly just cut a window in the plate and allow some of that material to flow out. And it would prevent the jamming that's occurring right now. Finally, Mark gets in the rig himself to figure out how to best operate the machine and discovers a possible answer. Once the material is in the bucket, keep it pointed at the ground. It'll do a couple of things. It'll allow you to see what's going on in the bottom. You'll be able to see the holes in the grizzly plate. And you'll also be able to see when the top teeth mesh through between the bottom teeth. That'll indicate to you that your cycle is finished. Go ahead and grab another mouthful. I don't think you have to worry anything about breaking the teeth at all. Uh, we've been beating it pretty hard, and they, can, they seem to be able to stand up to it. So just go ahead and give her. The operator has to develop a technique on how to use this brand new tool. There's no instruction manual on how to run one of these pulverizers. They're the only one in the world like it, and it's just kind of dreamt up and drawn up and built. So he may develop techniques to use it I hadn't thought of. And the development continues. The new pulverizer is an improvement on the old machine in many ways, but it will also be more expensive. It will be up to the demolitions to figure out if it's worth the money.